Hey everybody, thanks for staying connected. Well, it's been musical chairs for Alouette's quarterbacks this season. Jonathan Crompton is the fourth QB to get the call. Crompton keeps his personal life on the lowdown, but R. Kelly Gregg managed to get him out of his pocket for this report. Crompton, up to throw, he's got it. Up to Crompton, looking to the end zone, touchdown! While fans know number 18 as a quarterback who is all business on the field, it might come as a surprise that Jonathan Crompton's approach to football isn't anything you'd see in a playbook. If I have an extra couple seconds in the huddle, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I, I say something dumb, just completely off the wall. I've always wanted to go get like a live chicken and put it in somebody's locker. But I don't know if that, I don't think I don't think I'd get away with that. I don't first of all, I don't know where to get a chicken. Crompton was born and raised in Asheville, North Carolina. After playing for the University of Tennessee Volunteers, he bounced around the NFL before landing a spot with the Edmonton Eskimos in 2013. He was picked up by the Alouettes this July and admits that adjusting to life as a Montrealer hasn't been as smooth as his transition to the starting lineup. I don't know anything about hockey. That's, I probably should have admit that. We'll edit that. Um, <laughs> I need to learn to speak French. Huh? I can do how to say, je m'appelle Jonathan. Um, that's really about it. <laughs> After only three months in Montreal, he's emerged as the Alouette's starting quarterback over Alex Brink, Tanner Marsh, and the injured Troy Smith. He's won two out of his three starts, and while his stats aren't breaking any records, He's been the most consistent quarterback the Owls have seen all season, completing 61% of his passes. But it hasn't always been that way. Very early in his career, his accuracy needed a little work. Oh, I was like two years old when I first picked up the ball. I was breaking pitcher frames in the house. My, uh, my mom was not happy, but my dad thought it was awesome. He was like, this two-year-old can throw the ball. We were, whatever sport was in season, football, baseball, basketball, whatever. We were playing in the house, which you probably shouldn't have been. Now, another two-year-old is stealing the show for the Cromptons. Family always comes first for Jonathan. That means his niece, sister, and his mother. I'm still, as he says, I'm still her little baby, because I'm the youngest in the family, but I am, that's what I tell my mom, I'm 27, like I can shave my head, and she said, no you can't. I'm, what mom says goes. I don't care how old anybody is, what mom says goes. Despite his mother's advice, Crompton is dedicated to not only growing, but shaving and donating his hair to Locks of Love. It's a charity that hits close to home for him. In early September, his ex fiance Chelsea lost her battle with ovarian cancer. Two days later, Crompton won his first game as an Alouette starter. My aunt has had double breast cancer and survived. Um, obviously, what just happened. Uh, recently with me and uh, I just feel like everybody in some way shape or form has been affected by a terminal disease. My parents always taught me you know treat others the way you don't want to be treated and I know that it would make me feel better God forbid I'm ever in that situation but if you know if I am then hopefully I would be fortunate enough to have somebody do that for me. Sometimes we can take life a little too seriously at some points and stress out over things we don't need to stress out about. And I'm fortunate I get to play a game for a living. And then going home on vacation and seeing my little niece, it, it really puts life into perspective that there are bigger things in life than just what we do for a living for anybody. Um, and just to appreciate who's around you and, and life in general. 